Today we're looking at a script which calculates how wind load is distributed into a building. The only input is the lines that represent the center lines of the structural members. And the outputs can be used in structural analysis quite easily. The idea of this script is to work out which parts of a building will be loaded given a particular wind direction. And to do that, the only input required is a bunch of lines. The lines only need to roughly represent a building. So they can be taken from architecture straight away or a structural model. They don't need any of this secondary stuff. They can just be the outline of the perimeter. Although it does work a little bit better if you have something for the facade to carry the load, which I'll show in a minute. So to step through the logic, as the wind comes from this direction here, imagine there's a panel on this facade. Now the panels are assumed to be vertically spanning, which is mostly the case for larger buildings. And if it is horizontally spanning facade panels, the spandrels will load the floors in the end anyway. So the load's gonna end up at the floor level, no matter what. So say I've got this panel here and it's vertically spanning. Half of the wind will load this member here and half will go into the ground. And you can see that in the span direction I've got there. So as I turn on some of the visualization, you can see that the blue rectangle shows that half of the load is going to this upper member. Half goes into the ground and therefore it's disregarded because there's no member at that lower level. If you go up another level, you can see the dark blue half goes into this member and the light blue half goes into this upper member. The number represents the meters squared per meter. So this is a four meter high column. So two meters squared per meter is the line load across that edge. Now the next thing I can do is move around the building. So if I change the wind direction, you can see again, same situation here. Remember we're looking at wind that's direct onwards. That's why the arrows are that way. And here you can see this member here is taking double the load that this member's taking. Because this member's taking all of the dark blue, whereas this member is only taking the light blue, which makes sense. And I can obviously step around the whole building and it automatically picks up which members take the wind load in the same way. And as we know, I've shown this image before, as the wind comes through in plan, it's going to hit the front face. It's going to create vortexes around the edge as it moves around the edges of the building and it's going to pull the two other faces away from the structure. And at the rear, it's going to pull away as well. So as I turn on the rest of the visualization, you can see that face pulling away and the sides also pulling away. So overall that's all the wind load hitting the walls of the building.
and you can just simply move the wind around and see the effects. So looking at the component in the grasshopper window, that's what it looks like. It gives you that visual representation of where the load's going. And the output is in terms of the curve that's loaded, the member that's loaded, and the vector of that load. The vector num uh, load is, is the direction and the number. So the first two are member and vector of the windward face. Side one, which is the right hand side. The leeward face, which is the purple. And side two is the other side. So the great thing about having it in that form is you can just plug it into a structural model, which I've got the components needed to do that here. So all I need is my curves and vectors. If I grab all these members, which are just the lines, and put that into members, which turns everything into a beam. I've already worked out my supports, which are just these pins down here. And all I need to do now is put the loads in. It's steel and I've got a simple section size. So I'll just put the front face in. You can split it up or you can put them all in there. Just the curves and the vectors. And then you can just run the analysis. And you can see the deflected shape, which makes sense already because the wind is forcing it this way and it's trying to push the building over. And if you want all of them in there, you can just hold down shift, add all the curves and all the vectors. Run the analysis. And you can see it's further deflection because you've got more load on there. But you can see it makes sense because these side walls are trying to pull out. The leeward face is even more deflected because it's got even more load on that edge, etc. So seeing the principles on a smaller building, we can now move to something a bit bigger. And you can see that it's pretty quick to calculate the results. I'm just flicking through in real time here. So you'll probably notice a few things about this output. I should point out. First one is it doesn't do the roof. So it's concerned with the overall lateral stability of a building. The roof is a separate problem, but you are going to have some uplift on these roof members and down down um, down force as well based on where it is in relation to the leading edge of the wind. Second one is shadowing. So again, this is useful for overall lateral stability. So it calculates the whole force of the wind. So if I put it, that face on, you can see that everything's in green. So and here everything's in blue, although the purple comes through a bit from the leeward face, but every piece of structure is covered once. So what it does mean is though that these inner faces don't receive load. So really it's a tool for overall stability because all of the wind is accounted for, but you could probably argue that some of this vortex shedding at this rear face is going to happen. So these members behind here that are shadowed should also take some additional load. And I'm just showing the analysis results again. I've just plugged in the members and one face of wind load and you can see the sort of deflected shape you're going to get.
If I do that in east, it takes a little while to do the analysis because it's a fairly big building, a reasonable size. Still working. There you go, you can see I've only plugged in that windward face there. But you can see uh, already where you might need to stiffen this building up because this portion here is really getting pushed out. Most of the time this script works out everything automatically. However, as I said earlier, there's a few small cases where it needs a bit of guidance and that's really a result of just using lines as inputs which is good because input lines are easy to get from architects or a structural model whereas surfaces you usually have to draw them which is very time consuming but anyway that's one of the trade-offs and you can see where the trade-off isn't perfect in this model and you can see that here where it's got a gap in that blue surface right there and it can't find it thinks there's no facade there in that little strip so it's gone all the way back to the other side of the building to find a surface now you can fix that with some guidance here and that's where these four inputs come in so I'll actually show this on another model this one which is quite challenging for the script to work out. This face and this face are pretty straightforward. It's getting them pretty well. But when it comes to this wave shaped roof and the wind hitting it on this face, it can get a little bit confused. You can see this most clearly in the east direction because there's so many little members in this wave shape it can't quite work out where the facade is so it's skipping through a lot of this facade here so all you need to do is select which facade members will take the load so you can probably see them in green if I turn this preview off it's these members here And if I now turn all that on, if I attach that to the east facade, I'm telling the script, ignore all the other members, ignore your what you think's there, but use those facade members that are uh, overwritten. And you can see it now works perfectly again. And it also has cleaned up the other side as well. So that's, these overrides are useful if you've got some really strange geometry and you need to force the script to select certain members which are going to take the facade load. And the last thing to say is, as per the first principles, this works out where the wind load goes in terms of metre squared per metre as a linear line. But the actual pressure and therefore the actual load is up to the designer to determine. So it's up to the engineer to calculate that along with reduction factors including aerodynamic. So as I've said in some of my other videos and all the codes will have this, the sidewall for example tapers off as you get further from the windward face and that isn't uh, calculated automatically so the engineer has to do that <clears throat> and secondly make sure it makes sense in terms of any additional load you might need on the shadow faces and things like that but overall hopefully this could be a very useful tool to speed up 
wind analysis, which can take a very long time, as I know from experience. So I'll leave it there for now. Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful, and we'll see you in the next one.